this becomes the new lever point and this becomes, the, the sword becomes your new limb, this point is the focus of your eyes because you need to watch what's happening through here, this point, this point here. Okay. Will that give you more of an indication of what your opponent is doing than their elbow? It's, it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. It will move faster than the elbow though. So really you need to sort of look at this general region to see the line of what your opponent will do. Okay. Again, this point though will move slower than the tip of the sword. Okay. If I do that with the sword, I look at my wrist. The, the tip of my sword, you can't even see. Again, this again your elbow your, it will move slower than your, your your wrist. So it's all relative. Jump, jump. It's Tiger Slash. Now again, we're doing it in a neutral stance to begin with and just get the flow through the arms. Not only is this a uh, reference to the technique you're applying, but also very uh, conditioning and can be quite taxing on your arms. So again, when you work out with the swords, because a lot of the, uh, pretty much all the techniques correlate directly to what you do with your open hand, say movements, um, it's strength in your open hand technique, so it's like weight training for your Wing Chun. Okay, this is one of the main advantages of learning the sword. Not only uh, do you learn how to... Uh, the, the two main practical reasons, a lot of, a lot of uh, Wing Chun masters don't teach a sword because they don't see a, a reason to teach it because they don't see it fits in today's society. But I disagree with that and I think that the two main reasons is strength and conditioning for your open hand techniques and the other is you can pick up any implement that you put in the palm of your hand any two implements two biros you know two pens a news two news a newspaper or your handbag or anything you put in your hand if you are attacked by someone who is brandishing a weapon a bottle or a, a, a knife a stick and you know how to use two arms at the same time holding something anything can become a weapon of self-defense anything okay so these are the real two main reasons why i think it's very practical to learn the swords okay all right so jiao jiao jam is the slashing tiger slashing weapon movement my the swords it's like a big pair of scissors the swords always turn the blades always turn to face each other as they come towards each other, into your, towards the center line. So the right hand will come over, the right hand will travel under. Over, under. You can get a full rotation, working the muscle groups to the shoulders and arms, the chest. You do this one minute please in your, in your neutral stance. Bring your knees, pelvis forward, back straight. All right, going on back to the, the jam, jam. The jaw jump. Okay. This is a tiger slash. Now we're going to do a changing side neutral stance. When we change side neutral stance, you don't have to open up so wide. In fact, it can be a little bit confusing because one generally stays on your center line, where one is extended out all the most the whole way along your central line. So when I do this in front. It's just to warm up your arms and get the sort of right motion occurring. But when I apply it, note that this sword sits in my center. Yeah. One. Now see this one here. This one here sits in my center. One, two. This one here, this one here stays close to your center. Now, not that I'm just doing it on one side, but you can do two on each side, two on each side, you could do four on each side, you could do one on each side. We're going to do two on each side, so we get a two uh, over under on both sides. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So start, swords are open, like swords are open. Swords are open, swords are open, swords are open. As you turn, it comes over. One, two, swords are open. One, two. One, two, 
Put your sword out. One, two. Okay. All right. So, come to the side so you can see. He's just doing the straight jump, the same attacking movement that you learn at the beginning. Okay. Now, for your benefit of you guys, make the arc a little wider. Could give you more option to get inside the arm because that's really what we're trying to do. So make the arc just a little wider so it's coming around a little bit. Yeah, okay. Now remember, the person who cuts dictates the timing of the rotation. So I need to do two cuts for each, each of his cuts. So you need to slow down a little bit with one another. All right, so stop there. I start with my guard, okay? Now he turns, one, cut, stay. Okay, okay, we'll actually, we'll, yeah, go again. Okay, one, stop, 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 stop. One, two, one, two. Yeah, one, two, one, two. Now, no, let's just go back, let's go back. Let's come forward a little bit. This one, I'm in, this one is in the center, covering this line. This one is traveling up the, up the weapon, cutting. All right, now, as I turn, this one turns, cuts underneath, and then cuts on top. One, two, excuse me, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so you guys getting the idea? Now, I was doing two. Generally, you probably won't, you might not get time to do two. So then you might just do one on each side. It's no different. Watch, just go again. One, go, go. Two, one, two. Same thing. One, two. Now I'm just doing both underneath. But guess what? I can do both on top. Now, if it's coming on top, it would generally be against a lower, a lower, you know what I mean? Ah, of course. Lower attack. You won't get my body from here. If you try to reach my body, yeah, yeah you'll you're be. going to expose way too many targets too quickly. You've got to hold your hand. What's that old Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler? You've got to know when to uh, show, your skill, show your card. If you produce too much target immediately, you're very vulnerable. So if he's up a little higher, he's attacking, well, from here I'm going to go underneath. Yeah, underneath, underneath. Now this is, this is just a slash. Each, one, one is a block, one is a cut, one is a block. Just like puck, you know, puck's our punch, lock's our punch. It's just the same action you do with your hands. Put your swords down. So he punch, just change that neutral punch. Punch, punch, same movement, same movement. Again, you want to make your arc a little wider. Wider, yeah. Same movement, same movement, same movement. Okay, again, it correlates. All right, so you will have trouble with this. Um, just the person feeding the line, the, the attack a little wider, a little, sort of a curved attack that will give that person more time to uh, play inside the movement and wait until they get their movement right. And then I want one, two, and then turn. One, two. So the first, you can do it either way, but I want you to cross your swords and open your, uh, sorry, cross your swords and open your swords. Cross your swords and open your swords. So when he cuts, you cross your sword and open the sword and turn it over. Cross the swords and open them. This is where it gets confusing because you have to turn, this, this back sword becomes the next blocking sword. The back sword becomes the next blocking sword. So you have to turn your swords to face each other.